Thank you. Such great spirit. I want to start by saying it's going very well. Uh, there are some bad spots in Pennsylvania where uh, some serious things have been caught or in the process of being caught, but uh, the election itself is uh, going very well. We're leading, I believe, in all seven swing states. So uh, I appreciate everybody's work, and uh, the spirit is unbelievable. I don't think there's ever been anything like it in our country's history, frankly, because we want to see our country get better. And that's why we're here, just to do a statement. Uh, and it's an honor to have some of our friends here. In less than four years, Kamala Harris has obliterated our borders, obliterated. We've never had a situation like this decimated the middle class, and runaway inflation has caused problems the likes of which we never thought possible. Bloodshed, squalor to our cities is common, and they've unleashed a war and chaos all over the world. You take a look, everything's blowing up or getting ready to blow up. No respect for our country anymore, no respect for our leadership. No person has caused so much destruction and death at home and abroad should ever be allowed to be the President of the United States. Can't have that. Can't have that. So I'm running on a plan to save America. We're going to save America. We have no choice. It's the greatest there is. We love it. And we're going to save it. We have no choice. And it's going to be saving it from the incredible destruction that's been caused by crooked Joe Biden and Kamala. And she's responsible because he wasn't responsible, and she never said that. He didn't know too much about what was happening. Maybe that was exposed during the debate. And yet still, the way they took that away from him was not was not right. It wasn't right. Shouldn't have happened that way. They walked in, they said, we're taking it away. They took, they stole the presidency of the United States. You can call it a coup, you can call it whatever, but they stole it. They went in like taking candy from a baby and uh, can't have that. And she's running on a campaign of demoralization and really a, can of, a campaign of destruction. But really, perhaps more than anything else, it's a campaign of hate. It's a campaign of absolute hate. And, you know, I said yesterday that uh, she's a vessel. She is a vessel. It's a very big, powerful party with smart people. I have to be smart. But it's uh, vicious. They're vicious. And they're perhaps even trying to destroy our country. Because who would want open borders where millions of people can flow in from prisons and from gangs, gangs, the worst gang members anywhere in the world. Who would want this for our country? Who would want uh, all of these transgender operations all over the place, like at will, even if you're in detention, I want a transgender? These are things she stood for. Who wants to defund the police? She's wanted her whole career to defund the police. She only changed recently. She changed on 15 different items, fracking, uh, she was against fracking at the highest level. Wouldn't even think about it. Now, all of a sudden, oh, I'd like fracking very much. But they change after the election in about two minutes, and I think Pennsylvania understands that. After two assassination attempts in just over three months, her lies and her slanders are very shameful and really inexcusable. And I can say that if I were president and somebody was being threatened, openly threatened, like they've threatened me, I would say, if you do that, even if this was an opponent, an opponent who I disliked, if you do that, we will obliterate your entire country, and it would all stop. But they wouldn't make that statement. They won't make that statement. And essentially, that statement has been made by other presidents even concerning their opponents, as you know. Today, we're going to talk about the real char character of Kamala and uh, a person who has 
No remorse for the anguish she's inflicted upon families all across America. On the contrary, I have to tell you, Kamala intends to conflict and keep this misery going, and she's going to keep it going as long as she can, because that's the only way she can get elected. Uh, she's going out and only criticizing, talking about Hitler and Nazi, and because her record's horrible. Her borders are the worst in the history of the world. There's never been a border in the world like this. I always say in third world countries, banana republics, they'd fight them away with sticks and stones if they had to. We let them come in, come on in. Knowing in many cases they're murderers, they're drug lords, they're they're traitors in so many ways to our country. If they were involved in our country at all, even that, they're coming back in. People that left because they were traitors are coming back in. Everybody's coming back in. And it's at a level that we've never seen before. Criminals off the streets. And you know, other countries from where they're coming are now setting records, good records for them, where crime is down 70 and 75% because they're taking the criminals off the street. They're emptying their jails into our country. And they're not finished yet. They've got, I'm amazed. I thought they would have done it by now, but they're, if you take a look at Venezuela, their crime is way, way, way down. Then you go to Caracas and you wouldn't recognize it. You can actually walk the streets without, without being shot or killed or mugged. It's becoming a safe city because they've taken all their criminals. Most of them, the rest are coming. They're all coming. They've taken their drug dealers and they've put them into the United States of America. Thank you very much, Kamala. I appreciate it. But she continues and she will continue this misery and her policies have caused uh, such harm and such pain. And the three great people up here with me are going to just discuss that for a little while about what's happened to them, how their lives have been shattered. I'd like to begin with the story of one mother whose life Kamala has utterly destroyed, destroyed this life. And we're talking about thousands, thousands of people in very similar situations every day under Kamala, open border policies. She, and if you remember, Joe Biden appointed her as the border czar. She doesn't want to use that term, but let's say we'll just use a different term. She was responsible for the borders totally responsible. She never made one call to Border Patrol. Two weeks ago, the Border Patrol endorsed me with the most beautiful endorsement I think I've ever gotten. And in all fairness, they've endorsed me every single year, but they've endorsed me again, and they uh, endorsing me, saying I was the best president we've ever had and the best president by far on the border. They said that, they said that, and this is not easy for them to say, they said that she was easily the worst person ever to work with them on the border, most incompetent, uh, the least caring. Think of it, not one call in almost four years was made to Border Patrol, like, how are we doing? I used to call all the time. I'd say, how are we doing, fellas? How's it going? Is it going well? And they're, they're great people. Men and women, Border Patrol, great people. They want to do their job. She didn't call them once. She released the two uh, men who murdered this woman's very precious daughter. Everything you need to know about what happened and the character, the character of Kamala Harris, you'll know from just watching this video. We had it done yesterday. It's very... Very quick, very easy to do, but it was very heartbreaking. We, we showed it in a room full of people, and everybody was just, everybody was crying. Some pretty tough people were crying. Uh, please take a look. Sunday night, I asked her to not stay up super late because of her coming to work with me in the morning for us to do her summer school. She said, okay. I told her good night, and I love you. I went to bed, not realizing that that was going to be the last time I saw her. Hmm? We're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go shake it again. <laughs> I woke up 
to notice she wasn't in her bed. I'm in my heart trying not to lose my mind because I don't know where she is. I finally remembered her phone had a location on and her phone was pinging just two minutes down the road right behind the skate park. I start driving to the direction the phone was being pinged at and I see a couple cop cars with lights on. I see yellow tape and immediately my heart drops and sinks to the bottom of my stomach. My daughter's hands and ankles were both bound. She was strangled to death, with left with no pants. And I know in my heart, she fought incredibly hard. She was not going down without a fight. We begin with two men. We're learning our charge with capital murder tonight, accused of killing a 12-year-old girl. Police say these men strangled her before dumping her into that creek. Both men were in the country illegally. Apprehended, then released by Border Patrol less than three weeks before Jocelyn's death. The men accused of killing Jocelyn Nungare are affiliated with the gang, known for brutal violence. Kamala Harris was in charge of immigration in our borders. If we had better border policies and not open borders and not these catch and release policies. I truly believe this all could have been prevented. Under her being vice president of this country, my daughter's life was ripped away from her. She had her entire life ahead of her. Happy birthday, dear Jocelyn. My daughter is six feet in the ground based off of policies that she allowed to keep. Kamala Harris did have one job and she not only failed, not me, she failed my daughter, she failed Jocelyn, you know, she was only 12. President Trump reached out, gave me his sincerest condolences as not a former president, but just as a father, someone who cares. I believe Donald Trump needs to be back in office, I can at least know that my next child will be safe in this country. Thank you very much. So I know we talk about inflation and the economy, but is to me, there's nothing, nothing more important than the fabric of our country being destroyed by people placed there, violently placed there, as far as I'm concerned, foolishly, stupidly placed there. I think uh, what's happening on the border is the single biggest issue, and I'm seeing it more and more when I speak. I see it more. The inflation's terrible. It's hurting our country. It's just, just decimating our seniors. That's why I talk about Social Security. No tax for our seniors on Social Security because they've been decimated by, they've been decimated by inflation. But what Kamala did to Jocelyn and her family is the most uh, heartless and cold-blooded betrayal imaginable. Thousands of cases just like that, thousands, in throwing open the border. Think of it, open borders, they come in, from parts unknown, people have no idea who they are, where they're from, anything about them. They know nothing. They just walk into our country. And as soon as I heard they were doing that, I said, well, I know these countries. I know every one of the leaders of all these different countries. They're very smart. They're very sharp. They're very streetwise. I said, I know what they're going to do. They're going to open up their jails and just dump them into the United States. And that's what happened. They opened up their jails. And some of the most ruthless killers in the world are now roaming our fields and our streets all over the United States. I knew that was going to happen, and I would do the same thing if I were running one of those many countries that we're talking about, and not just the three or four that we constantly mention that are near us all over South America, all over the Middle East, all over Asia, all over Europe, all over Africa. Tremendous numbers of people are coming out of Africa, and uh, they're coming from all over the world. They're dumping them at our border, pushing them across the line. 
and say, don't ever come back. If you come back, we're going to kill you. And we're stuck with them. But we're not going to be stuck with them for long. So Kamala violated her oath. She desecrated our laws, and she got innocent girls like Jocelyn tortured and killed. Anyone who knowingly sets loose these monsters into our country has absolutely no right to be running for office, let alone the office of president. No right. So here today is another great person, an American mom, Tammy Nobles. Two years ago, Tammy's 20-year-old daughter, Kayla Hamilton, who had an autism diagnosis, was found raped, tied up and strangled to death with a telephone cord in her home. Kayla's murderer was an illegal alien, MS-13 gang member, among the most vicious gangs anywhere in the world. I took him out by the thousands, thanks to ICE. We're going to protect ICE. Kamala wanted to defund ICE. If we didn't have ICE, we'd never get anybody out. They're tough and they're smart and they love our country. But an MS-13 gang member who was apprehended by Border Patrol, but under the policy of our border czar, Kamala, he was released into the United States to kill. Tammy, please come up and say a few words, please. Thank you. Please. I just wanted to say that Homeland Security did not do their job. Health and Human Services did not do their job. The Biden-Harris administration did not do their job. If they would have done their job, made that one phone call to El Salvador, my daughter would still be alive today. Kayla was a very beautiful young lady inside and out. She was independent, learning to become independent. She had two jobs. She overcame obstacles dealing you know, with autism and was able to find a job that she loved. She loved animals, especially her cat, Oreo, and she cared about the homeless. She loved God and she loved going to church. And her life was just ripped from her three days after she celebrated her 20th birthday. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Tammy. And we will not forget Kayla. And she's looking down. She's very proud of mom. Kamala's cruel and uh, immoral actions on our border are actually disqualifying, in my opinion. She's unfit. She's an unfit person. And she knows this is going on. She never called anybody, including the 13 soldiers that were so needlessly killed in Afghanistan with that horrible, that horrible moment in time where our country was just lost all respect from the whole world when they saw that. That's one of the reasons that Putin went in. He would have never gone in, ever. He wouldn't have gone in. If I were president, he would have never gone in. I ended his pipeline in Europe, no problem. And what happened? Biden comes in, he proves it right away, but he kills the Keystone Pipeline. Putin never would have come in. And he didn't, by the way, for four years. There was never a threat that he was going to do that. But he saw weakness, and he, I think a lot of it was seen in that horrible, that horrible period of time. She is also aiding and abetting the cartels, allowing vast quantities of deadly drugs to pour unchecked into our country. And remember this, uh, they now have an app. You call the app and you bring Whatever you want, you bring them over, they'll tell you exactly. Can you believe it? They have an app. And they have airplanes, big, beautiful Boeing airplanes flying back and forth over our border. They were saying, where are those planes coming from? Where are they going? They were loaded up with migrants. They're dropping them out in the Midwest. They're dropping them all over the place. And I will tell you, if you look at uh, Aurora in Colorado or in Springfield in Ohio, in Ohio they dropped 32,000 illegal aliens. They tried to give them legal terminology, but it's not. 
illegal aliens, 32,000 into a 50,000-person town, beautiful town, no problems. And now they don't know what to do. And they want to be nice, and the mayor wants to be nice. His big thing is to get interpreters, because they, they don't speak the English. It's very hard to get interpreters. And he's trying to get interpreters. But in the meantime, they're taking up the hospital. So when people from Springfield would routinely be able to check with a doctor, go to a hospital, they're unable to get in, they're packed. The whole town has changed. And this is happening all over our country. Aurora probably is an even worse situation because you have the meanest, worst gang from Venezuela in the world, probably maybe as bad or worse than MS-13. And they've literally taken over the town. They've taken over large sections of the town. They've gone into the real estate business. They've taken over apartment complex. They took over a number of complexes where the people are paying them rent. They've become the landlord. Isn't that nice? And they're rough, tough people. And they have the latest weapons. They have military quality weapons. And everyone's saying, where did they get them? We got to get them out of here. We're going to get them out fast. We're going to get them out fast. So today, I'm announcing that for the first time under my administration, we will be seizing the assets of the criminal gangs and drug cartels. And we will use those assets to create a compensation fund to provide restitution for the victims of migrant crime, and the government will help in the restoration. The government will help in the restitution. Uh, but something has to be done, and we're going we're gonna to get it done. Kamala has also caused untold misery through her destruction of our economy. Our economy is not — this is just — it's like a fake economy. Uh, some of the best — some of the best — People on Wall Street are saying the economy is only good because they think — I don't want to say this because other people have said it. It's not me saying it, but they think Trump is going to get elected. That's the only reason our economy is good. That's the only reason the stock market is up. Scott is here, I think, someplace, and he's one of the most respected people on Wall Street. He's been — he's actually made a very big point of it that the stock market is only doing well because of the fact that they think Trump is going to win the election. So uh, we'll see. But Kamala cast the deciding votes that caused the worst inflation in our lifetime. Maybe the worst inflation we've ever had, because I don't think they're — I mean, I know for a fact they're not adding all of the numbers. If they did, I think it's the worst inflation probably in our — the lifetime of the country. And uh, it's costing typical American families over $30,000. Nearly half of Americans now say they're broke. Think of that. Half of Americans are saying they're broke. They have no money. Two-thirds say they're living from paycheck to paycheck. And that's a record. Never — we've never had that. To that extent, we've never, ever had that. Millions of Americans are lying awake at night, worried about how they are pay their bills because Kamala wrecked their family finances, and she's done that. She's done nothing good. They have done nothing good. And I speak of Kamala, but it's partially Joe, but Joe's out of it, you know. Joe's sort of out of it. She's been out of it for a long time. Now she wants to raise taxes for the typical family by $3,000 a year. She's got no empathy for the hardworking Americans whose dreams she's killed and said, recently that there is not one thing that she would do differently from Biden. That's only because she choked. I'm sure she could have come up with a couple of things if she really thought about it, because there's been so much destruction caused by the Biden administration. One of the things that people don't talk about and the news never talks about, they don't talk about, as an example, Afghanistan. But this is something that's incredible, because when you think of the numbers, 325,000 children are missing, dead, sex slaves or slaves. 325,000 children who came in through the open border are now missing. Many of them are dead. And nobody talks about it. It's, uh, I said, 
This must be a mistake. This can't be possible. When I read it first, when I read it, I said, this can't be. You're talking about take your largest stadium and fill it up many times. That's what the kind of numbers are. Here today is Michael Coppy, a small business owner who runs a dry cleaner and is struggling to get by because of what Kamala has done to his business. They've, they've destroyed small businesses in this country. Michael, please. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Mr. President, for affording me the opportunity and the high honor of joining you here today and sharing my small business story with you folks and the American people. So it's uh, a chain of eco-friendly dry cleaners throughout the Tri-County here in West Palm. And um, it seems not too long ago, just a few years, uh, the customer and us, the small business owner, we were able to keep up with inflation. There were resources available to us for expansion, um, or if you had a bad month, you know, if there was something you needed to make up for, it seemed like the support was there. Um, and now, just a few short years later, uh, it seems like all of those resources uh, have dried up. The support's no longer there. Uh, we had an expansion plan about six years ago um, that we had to pause because we have to wait for our customers now to catch up with um, the inflation, the supply chain issues still, because we as a small business, we can't double our price points, although the cost of doing business now is two, three, or four times what it was just a few years ago. So we've had to get creative. Our industry, probably 30% in the dry cleaning industry, never survived COVID. And uh, just recently this summer, I was contacted, my wife and I, by another local dry cleaner here in West Palm, they were asking advice. So husband and wife been there for about 35 years, their lease was up, and the landlord was doubling their rent, which would have meant that that's what they've been paying themselves for probably the better part of 20 years. So they had to make a decision, do they hand the keys back, or do we get creative, work together, pool resources? And so what we did was we figured out the right price point for them, but we did their cleaning for them, at least until we figured it out. And so they were not able to pay their operations. They couldn't keep that going. But they were able to save their business by strategically partnering. And by the end of summer, I think I was contacted by about 12 other local dry cleaners saying, can you guys help us also? Because we're going through the same thing. Thank you. And it, and it seems now, so the, the, the delta between the reality of in what inflation is right now and we have in front of us, the reality of that and the small business owner's capabilities, that delta is too great. So unless we affect change immediately, I fear that in the next few years, if we don't see that change, we might see another 30% of our industry and others uh, no longer exist. So I just want to say thank you again, Mr. President, for allowing me to share my Go Green Dry Cleaner story. And... Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. We really helped a lot of people during the prime time of the China virus. And we helped a lot of people, and we did it intelligently. Then when they took over, they just threw money around like it was dirt. And as you know, uh, the uh, recent monster hurricane, Helene, just wiped out so much. If you look at the different states, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee, it was uh, just devastating, devastating. And the response was the worst since, since uh, Katrina. But really, uh, a lot of people think it was much worse than Katrina. It's still, they haven't shown up. They're not in North, they're not in North Carolina. The people of North Carolina have suffered incredibly, and it's just nobody to help them. FEMA has been a total disaster. We had FEMA that was fantastic when we did this, because we had our hurricanes, too. We had some bad ones, but uh, we did a great job with it. It's, uh, it's not there. And then you see that they, you know, originally blamed, and then they tried to take it back, but it was a little late. But they said that the money was spent on bringing illegal migrants into our country. They spent close to a billion dollars, and these were funds, and these were funds that were spent. And you have to say, I mean, I was in 
North Car Carolina recently, and I looked at devastation that was just — it was just uh, unbelievable. There was nobody there from the federal government. The local people have done incredible things. Franklin Graham has done incredible things. He's been amazing. But there was nobody there. So we're pleased also to be joined by Christy Shamblin, a person I know and I've gotten to know over the last year or so, the mother-in-law of fallen Marine Corps Sergeant Nicole G. Nicole made the ultimate sacrifice during the disastrous withdrawal. Not that we were withdrawing. I was going to withdraw, but we were withdrawing with dignity and strength and power, and we were going to keep Bagram, the big air base, because of the fact that it was so close to where China makes their nuclear weapons one hour away. We should have kept it, and we didn't do that. But, uh, but the way they withdrew, they took the soldiers out first. No, you take the soldiers out last. I went 18 months without one soldier. I spoke to Abdul, the leader of the Taliban. We went 18 months without one soldier even being shot at, no soldier being killed for 18 months. And then we left, and you had this group of incompetent people take over. Guys like Millie should have been fired. They should have been fired. Anybody that was involved with that disaster should have been fired. She was one of 13 U.S. service members who lost their lives. Kamala said she was the last person in the room, that Kamala was the last person in the room. She was involved in everything. She takes credit for that. She was involved in everything. That means she was involved in disaster after disaster, because nothing good has happened with this administration, except that our country has gone to almost a third world status. With Biden, when, uh, when Biden made a decision, she said she was there. Oh, she was there. But the Afghanistan decision was a disaster in so many different ways. And now you take a look at it, they're right back to what they were doing before, except much worse, much worse to women. They're worse to women right now than they were even before it started. But Kamala never reached out to the family members of the warriors. And she said she was going to, but she never did. She never called anybody. And Christy, I'd like you to come up and say a few words, please. Hi, good, good afternoon, good morning. Um, my name is Christy Shamblin, and my daughter-in-law was Sergeant Nicole Leanne G. And she was killed in the botched Afghanistan exit at Abbey Gate. She was the cornerstone of a very large family. And instead of planning family gatherings and holiday meals and Christmases and baby showers, our family and thousands of other families plan outings at funeral grave sites. And that is where we as a family celebrate my daughter-in-law at Arlington National Cemetery because she is in the ground. Her story isn't unique to our family. She's just ours. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of wounded veterans who came home from that war, who need our help and who are ignored by our current administration. President Trump demonstrates peace through strength. I know what he told the Taliban when he was negotiating with them because I've made it my business to know. And what he said to them when he was negotiating with the Taliban, he said, I will kill you if you harm one hair on one head of an American. <laughs> President Trump shows up, he reaches out, and he can fix our country, and we can all heal together. Thank you very much. It's so sad. So many cases, so many cases like this. Nobody should have died. First of all, when they left, the soldiers should have been there. They shouldn't have been home watching, except for a small group, and many of them got killed. And large numbers, nobody ever mentions the arms, the legs missing, gone, the face just obliterated. 
Nobody talks about them. I talk about them all the time. But I want to thank you, Christy, and we'll carry uh, Nicole's memory in our hearts forever. The full consequences of Kamala's four-year reign are almost too terrible to discuss or contemplate. We're coming to the end of a great campaign. I think we've had a great campaign. We've really not been provided the kind of protection that I needed as president, but I said we have to do it anyway. When Secret Service would ask for additional people, oftentimes we would be turned down. They were constantly asking for additional people. And I found Secret Service to be very brave. When I went, when I was hit and went down, they were right on top of me within seconds. I tell you what, those bullets were flying right over my head. I heard them. And these guys were right I, I don't know how they didn't get hit, actually, but they were right there. You take a look at the the video. One thing we would say, the video is there for, for people to see, but, but they were never given the kind of uh, help that they requested because our rallies were massively large, and they needed more people, and they, they were always fighting for more people, and it was never, never given to them. Now, now they're being given, I hope, what they need, but... Uh, but we, we were, that was a constant fight. They'd come to me and they'd say, uh, you guys don't want to give us the people. And yet Biden was covered and they'd have like two people show up. <laughs> but uh, Kamala is grossly incompetent, a total train wreck who has destroyed everything in her path. She's destroyed everything. She left 21 million aliens pour across our country, and then she maybe in a short while has to go home and to get herself a job someplace, who knows. But think about it, and she can look, and she can look at the carnage, and she can look at all the people that have been killed. And you haven't seen anything yet, because it's, they've just started. They're just getting comfortable in our country. These are very tough people. These criminals make our criminals look like nice people. And uh, she let the more than 13,000 convicted illegal aliens, nobody would have let these people into our country. And remember, they came out of the worst prisons in the world, the meanest, nastiest prisons in the world. And when she says that she wouldn't do anything different, does that mean that she would have let 325,000 migrant children probably die, most of them, many of them, but at a minimum, they're slaves or they're sex slaves? And they're all over the country. Does that mean that she wouldn't have changed that? Does that mean that she wouldn't have changed so many of the other things that, that led to so much death and destruction and even financial destruction of our country itself? We could end up in a depression because of what she's left with us. Uh, they are the worst combination president, vice president in the history of our country. And I often say Jimmy Carter's a happy man because his administration, by comparison, was totally brilliant. It was brilliant. After Kamala endorsed defunding the police, she bailed out rioters, looters, and murderers, took them right out of jail during the violent crimes in the United States. Remember, that was in Minnesota. Minneapolis was burning down. It was burning to the ground. I watched the CNN announcer say, this is a friendly group of people. And over his shoulder, the entire skyline was burning. I've never seen it. But that's the fake news. But violent crime in the United States is up 37 percent. All of these different crimes are up anywhere from 37 to 105 percent over a very short period of time. And it's almost like nobody even cares about it. Very simply, Kamala Harris is not fit to be your president. We can't have it happen. We can't have it happen. We're going to make this country strong again. We're going to make it great again. We're going to be respected again. Her message has been a message of hate and division. And my message is about saving our economy, securing our border, 
bringing together the greatest and broadest coalition in American history. There's never been a coalition like this. It's, everybody's included. And on issue after issue, she broke it. They broke it together. But for purposes of this election, she broke it. Can't let her go. And I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to fix it very fast. And on the illegal — thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, on the illegal immigrants that will be taken out of the country, as you know, uh, we're going to be taking them out. And if they come back, we have laws that will be immediately enacted where they serve 10 years in prison. They won't come back. And if that's not long enough, we'll have to do something else. But we don't want them back. They're not going to come back. And as you know, we're asking for the death penalty for any migrant who comes into our country and kills an American citizen or a police or law enforcement person. Because we have to protect our police. Our police are under siege also at numbers that nobody thought were possible. The worst they've ever seen. It's very hard to recruit. And really, for not just the danger, it's hard to recruit because they don't have the spirit anymore for our country because they're being led with people that are spiritless. They really are spiritless. They can't instill spirit. But uh, so that's any — any citizen, they get killed. Uh, it's a death penalty, and that includes police or law enforcement officers. But we're going to revive our economy. We're going to use a system of very fair, very reasonable tariffs. As I said, so powerful. We've never used them. I used them. China paid us hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, and no other president's gotten 10 cents from China. China had a free ride, but so did many other countries. European Union is taking advantage of us. They don't take our product, and yet we take their product all over the place. We take their farming product. We take their cars left and right, right? BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen. We, millions and millions, they don't take our cars. I said to Angela Merkel at the time, Angela, how many Chevrolets do we have in Berlin? Why? I don't believe you have any. I said, you're right about that, Angela. Well, we're going to change it. But we — they don't take our product. We have a deficit with them of over $300 billion. Think of that. And people think of them as friendly, but they're very tough and very uh, — very fair. I mean, look, they united in order to take advantage of the United States. That's why they united. That's why they formed their coalition. And uh, that was done to take advantage of the United States. So we know how to take advantage of them. We're going to take it back. We're going to take it all back. Those countries, many of — many of those companies will be coming back. They'll be coming back because when they're told that they're going to have to pay a 25 percent tariff or a 50 percent or a 100 percent, we saved our steel industry when I imposed large tariffs on China steel coming in. They were dumping steel here by millions and millions and millions of yards of steel like nobody's ever seen. Our steel businesses were going out of business. We can't lose our steel industry. If for no other reason, our own security. It's, we need steel. If we'd go to war, we're not going to go to war. We're not going to have World War III. But if we ever go to war, you, gotta, you better hope that we have a steel industry or those Beautiful tanks and everything else that we need to make won't be made. The planes, the tanks, the whole thing. And I saved it by imposing tariffs. They were dumping it. I think they were dumping it in order to destroy every, — every steel plant would have been closed if I didn't do what I did. And we happen to be taking in, you know, billions of dollars. In fact, it's so good that Biden has been trying his best to end it, but he's unable to do it. Too much money. It's been too much money. They're paying a fortune. And, uh, but I would have had it a lot different. And we'll get along with China. We'll get along with Russia. We'll get along with everybody. We had the fake Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, which took two years. And then they came out with a report that we did absolutely nothing wrong. And that was a stacked deck, too. The people doing it, they couldn't — they couldn't say there was nothing. We had nothing. They checked millions of phone calls, not one call made to Russia, not one call. Uh, it was a terrible thing they did to the country, and actually put us in a lot of danger, to be honest with you. If I didn't have somewhat of a relationship with Russia and Putin and all. We had to have it. And by the way, getting along with President Xi and Putin and Kim Jong-un of North Korea, if you remember when I met with Obama, 
His wife was very nasty to me the other day. Oh, I, that was not nice. She was very nasty. She said nasty things. I was always, I was always very, I was uh, always very respectful of her, but she, she got up there, which shows you how, how nervous they are about what's happening. But she was nasty two days ago. She got up and said some bad things she shouldn't have said. They were wrong, too. But we're going to turn our country around and... And we're going to pay a lot of respect to the three representatives, because that's what they are. They're representatives of millions of people. I mean, the businesses, so many businesses are just dying right now. That millions and millions of people. They're representative of, and our, our wounded, our wounded and our hurt soldiers, we have to take care of them. They came back from Afghanistan. Boy, nobody talks about it. They just don't talk about it. But I talk about them, and we're going to take care of them. You know, we had the greatest success with the VA, the Veterans Administration. We had a 92 percent approval rating. We got it so they had choice because they were waiting four, five, six. They were waiting four or five, six months, seven months to see a doctor. And I came in and I got, with the help of some of the great Congress people that are here, we have some great ones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We've got quite a few of them. And, uh, and I didn't even tell them to be here. They want to be here because they know exactly. Oh, yes, very good. We have one of, one of the greats. But uh, they wanted to be here. A lot of people wanted. I didn't tell anybody to be here, actually. But they wanted to be. But we have to take care of our military. Think of this. Soldiers are waiting six months to see a doctor. Can you imagine yourself? You don't feel good. You could be cured in, with a pill or with a shot or with something very minor, like a minor operation. And after six months, you're now terminally ill. So I made it. And they've been trying to do this for 48 years. I made it. We call it choice, like school choice, which is also a very good thing, by the way. But we call it choice, where you have your choice. You go to a doctor. If you have to wait more than one day, you go outside, you get a doctor, you get yourself fixed up, and we pay the bill. And it's been unbelievable. I heard just the other day for the first time that, that uh, Kamala and Biden are trying to destroy that. They're trying to make it so that you have to wait for six months again, back to where it was. We had a 92% approval rating. And now, uh, if, they do, if they go back to that, you were going to have — I did another thing. You weren't able to get, because of civil service, you weren't able to get fire people if somebody was a degenerate, if somebody was terrible, if they treated our heroes badly, we want them fired. We want them fired immediately. But we were unable to get them fired because they were protected by unions and by civil service. And I had it passed in Congress, which people have also been trying to get. And we were able to fire 9,000 people out of the VA and replace them with people that love our heroes as opposed to — as opposed to sadists. We had sadists. We had sick we had sick people. We had sadists in there that, that uh, really harmed our, our great people, our great veterans. And we were able to get rid of them. We got them out, and we replaced them with people that can love, our, love and take care of these uh, wonderful people that served us so well. So we did good. We had a 92 percent approval rate, and nobody's ever — they've been in the 40s and the 30s, and now it's heading back in that direction, I'm afraid. I hear they want to dismantle everything. And uh, it's almost like you'd say, why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? And yet they'll spend — you know, you can't say money, because they, they give away hundreds of billions of dollars to anybody that needs it, but they won't take care of our veterans. They won't take care of our people. They won't take care of our soldiers. They won't take care of our elderly. They won't take care of anybody, but they give every time certain people come to town, they walk away with $100 billion for countries that many people have never even heard of. So I just want to tell you, this is a campaign that's been uh, long and hard. Uh, I've been on the road or campaigning for 58 straight days. I haven't taken a day off. Proud of that. And, and I won't be taking one off. We have seven days to go. You can be sure I won't be. And do many, many things. Every year. And I, I just want to end by — I've watched their commercials, and they're really fraudulent. They'll say, 
he doesn't want to frack. I've wanted to frack always. They'll say, he, everything exactly the opposite. Oh, I want to destroy Social Security. No, they're going to destroy it. I'm the one that saved it. And for four years, we made it even better. I'm the one, and I didn't raise ages. I didn't do the things that they're going to do because they're allowing millions of these people to go into Social Security, Medicare. They're going to destroy it. She's going to, she's going to destroy the whole country because it's not sustainable by any country. But the ads and the statements that they make are exactly the opposite. They will say, th oh, I'm going to raise taxes. He is going to raise taxes. Just the opposite. I'm going to lower taxes, and I have done that, but I'm going to lower taxes, and she's raising taxes by 30, 40, and 50 percent. But they'll have a commercial. And I just say this because I hope people understand. These people lie. They lie. They're very disingenuous. And we are going to uh, finish up our campaign. And it's interesting because I haven't uh, taken any time off for a long time. I tell you who can tell you about that, all the people that follow us, including the people in the campaign, but including Secret Service, who has been working very, very hard. I will tell you, they've really been working very hard. And yet, a couple of days ago, she took off, and then she took off again, and again, and again. I say, well, how many times? You know, you're running for President of the United States. You had, like, at that time, about 20 days left. How the hell do you take off, right? You got to work. You got to work. So her, she says her teleprompter broke. Yeah, well, she better hope, she better hope it doesn't, you know, they break. And, and if, you don't, if you don't know how to do it without a teleprompter, you're a, you've got a problem. And she doesn't know how to do it without a teleprompter. So I just wish they'd stop lying, because the lies are, are vicious. And probably some people believe them. But the good news is, seven states, Republicans never lead in the early voting, because for whatever reason, it's habit or it's a certain security they feel in going to the booth. They believe well. They believe in. They believe in principle. But we never lead in. I don't know if we've ever led in early. Every single state we're leading in. Every single state at an early. And that and we don't need all of them. But at an early and some states are in in play that nobody thought would ever be in play. But I think uh, people are seeing because, again, we're the party of common sense. We're the party of common sense and. We want to have strong borders. We want to have great elections. We want to have fairness. We don't do things like we're not going to have men playing in women's sports. I mean, that's okay. So, so we're the party of common sense and we're the party of fairness. And we have a coalition. Nobody's ever seen anything like I don't think anybody has ever seen anything like what happened the other night at Madison Square Garden. The love, the love, the love in that room, it was breathtaking. And you could have filled it many, many times with the people that were unable to get in. But politicians that have been doing this for a long time, 30 and 40 years, said there's never been an event so beautiful. It was like a love fest, an absolute love fest. And it was my honor to be involved. And hopefully, you know, they, they started to say, well, in 1939, the Nazis used Madison Square Garden. Well, and you know what? Every, no, but can you imagine that? 1939, the Nazis, <laughs> they would. But, but how, how terrible to say, right? Because, you know, they've used Madison Square Garden many times. Many people have used it, but nobody's ever had a crowd like that. And I tell you what, right now, nobody's ever had love like that. That was love in the room, and it was love for our country. It was really love for our country. So we're going to fight like hell for the next seven days, and then hopefully... And then hopefully, and most importantly, we're going to be fighting even harder for the next four years, because we're going to turn this around, and we're going to make this country greater than it has ever been. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.